Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday night songs and scriptures. We are glad you're able to join us. We are very glad to be back in the house of the Lord. Um, I just want to take a time uh, and take a moment to pray for our nation and pray for peace and that your will uh, is done throughout our land. And in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest, I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. Can I just say, I have botched like seven phrases. <clears throat> so, we're just going to wave our arms here. Go back to the beginning, please. <coughs> I am so sorry. All right. So now you're going to have to do your intro again. Let's wave our arms. We're all good. All right. Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday night songs and scriptures. We are glad to be back in the house of the Lord. We are so excited to see people's faces again. I just want to take a moment and pray for our nation and pray for your love and your guidance and your grace. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest, I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. 
I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene, and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful, is my Savior's love for me. For me it was in the garden, he prayed not my will but thine. He had no tears for his own griefs, but shed drops of blood for mine. In pity angels beheld him, and came from the world of light. To comfort him in the sorrows, he bore for my soul that night. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful, is my Savior's love for me. He took my sins and my sorrows, he made them his very own. He bore the burdens to Calvary, and suffered and died alone. When with the ransomed in glory, his face I at last shall see. Will be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. I come to the garden alone, while the dew is still on the roses, and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses, and he walks with me and he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. He speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet, the birds hush their sleep. And the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we Tarry there, none other has ever known. I stay in the garden with him, though the night around me be falling. But he bids me go through the voice of woe, his voice to me. Is calling, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever. The love of God 
is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair bowed down with care, God gave his son to win. His erring child he reconciled and parted from his sin. O oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong, it shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' song. When years of time shall pass away, and earthly thrones and kingdoms fall, when men who hear refuse to pray on rocks and hills, and mountains call, God's love so sure shall still endure, all measureless and strong, redeeming grace to Adam's grace, the saints and angels' song. O oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong, it shall forevermore endure, the saints and angels' song. Could we with ink the ocean fill, and were the skies of parchment made, were every stalk on earth a quill, and every man a scribe by trade, to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry, nor could the scroll contain the whole, the stretch from sky. O oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong, it shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' song. Let's pray together. God, in these moments we bring our requests before you. God, you know each one on our prayer list, and so we place them in your hands, knowing that you are God, and we can entrust them to you. We think specifically of Wayne Billings as he goes to the cardiologist tomorrow. Give wisdom for treatment there, and I just pray you'd be with him in these days. God, I pray you continue to be with Rod Chapman, the touch that he needs. Jerome Nestor as he prepares for surgery next week. Pray you continue to be with Darla's Uncle Roy. Pray that you would continue to be with Bobby and Barbara Somerville and with Joe and Marie Handwerk. We ask your continued touch upon Mike Benton after his surgery and continue to build strength in him. Please continue to be with Leanne Blissett. And God, each one within the sound of my voice that needs a touch from you, I pray that you would meet the need and I pray that they would know that the God of the universe is holding them in the palm of his righteous right hand. Bless us in our time together this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight we'll be in Matthew's Gospel, chapters 5, 6, and 7. As we look at the Sermon on the Mount, we are not going to read it word for word. We'll read passages within it. Um, but it's important to understand uh, the power of Jesus' words. Um, as we look to him to learn about life. Um, tonight, I pray that you will be challenged to continue to lean upon him, to trust in him, and most importantly, to follow him. Because as we follow him, then others see what is happening in our lives, and they are stirred to follow him as well. That's our goal. That's our prayer. And so, if we're going to know him, we need to look at his words to see what he desires for us to know. Well, we see in the introduction in verses 1 and 2 of chapter 5, Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. The first thing he begins to talk about are the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, 
for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Now, a lot of these things are things that we can strive for, um, but there are some things that are on the list there that we would prefer to not be. It kind of, in a real way, goes against everything that we've been taught to seek after as far as worldly things go. Um, it really does begin to unfold his plan to bring in a kingdom upside down. So as we begin to understand that this looks different than what the world looks like, this is in contradiction to what the world looks like. Be meek. Be meek. But we're supposed to be strong. We're supposed to be self-sufficient. We're supposed to be able to do stuff and, and be able to take care of ourselves. And, and we need to be confident. Well, you can be confident and meek. Um, in a meekness, there's a, a mild manner. Um, and, and that's how Jesus was speaking even here, I believe. I believe that he's speaking to them. And while he is speaking life-changing words and very challenging words, I believe that he's doing it with a meek and humble heart. Blessed are those who mourn. Well, we don't want to mourn. We would prefer that everyone that we love live forever here among us. And yet we know that for the promise of heaven to be fulfilled, that we must let them go as difficult as that is. But he blesses those who mourn and they will be comforted. Hungering and thirsting for righteousness. That goes in direct opposition to seeking after power and seeking after the things of this world. Blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. Now, um, most of us have been to a doctor at one point or another. Several of us have been to cardiologists and had our hearts checked out. And as we have our earthly heart checked out, we, uh, we want to make sure that it's working well, that it's doing its job. And so we let the doctor run the tests that need to be run so that they're able to see and, and able to diagnose if there's something that needs to be changed or something that needs to uh, happen with medication or whatever it may be. Well, the same is true with our heart with God. We want to make sure that we are giving the great physician um, the authority to take our heart and purify it. And that means removing ourself from us. Um, and John talks about uh, how we must become less and he must become greater. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. <clears throat> Man, we live in a society right now that doesn't have much peace. And God is calling us right here from Jesus' very own words to be peacemakers. So find opportunities to be a peacemaker. Then he goes on and he talks about persecution. And we have brothers and sisters around the world who are being persecuted for their faith. And we need to find ways that we can encourage them. The best way, of course, is to pray for them, but we also want to look for opportunities to support them as they are walking through these difficult times. Well, he comes out talking about the Beatitudes and, and talking about the things in our lives that will guide us in this uh, way of life. And he moves into verses 13 through 16 and talks about salt and light. Now, I love salt. I mentioned it Sunday, you, you salt watermelon. Um, I, I like salt, I, I just do. Uh, it adds flavor. I also like light. Um, I like being able to see things. I, I don't like 
the darkness. Um, but Jesus is talking about this in a, in a spiritual realm to help us understand the importance of living lives that are salt and light in this world. He begins in verse 13, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, as we think about salt and light, um, we think as, as light comes into a situation, um, we're able to see things more clearly. As people see us living in the light, then they're able to see how Christ in us is helping us to live differently, to love differently, to act differently, to do life differently. Um, we have a saltiness about us that's not a, a snarky sarcasm saltiness, but a saltiness that brings flavor to life. And so we want to bring flavor to the life of others, and the flavor that we want to bring is that of Christ. So we want others to see our lives and desire to have the relationship with Christ that we have, not for our own gain and not for our own notoriety, but to glorify our Father who is in heaven. Well, he goes on and he talks about um, several different uh, laws and, and different things that you do and you don't do. Um, he talks about murder, he talks about adultery, divorce, oaths, talks about an eye for an eye, and then talks about uh, love for enemies. Um, that's a hard one, isn't it? Um, there in chapter 5, verse 43, you've heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now, this is a difficult passage. This is calling us, again, to live in direct opposition to the world. Um, love your enemies. Whoa. Pray for those who persecute you. I'm just going to tell you, we need to be living in Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 48. Then in chapter 6, we move into giving to the needy. And, and he talks about um, when you give to the needy, it's not something that you do for show so that others can see you, but it's something that you do in private so that you're able to honor God and yet take care of those who are in need. Your heavenly Father sees what is done in secret, and he rewards that. Um, the next section is on prayer, and Jesus gives them the model prayer, the Lord's Prayer. He talks about fasting, and he talks about uh, treasures in heaven, a passage we're all very familiar with in uh, verses 25 through 34, where he talks about not worrying. Um, and, and he talks about the birds of the air and, and the lilies or the grass of the field and how they are cared for um, and how much more does he care for us um, to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all of these things will be added to you as well. Verse 34, therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So Jesus, in, in continuing in the Sermon on the Mount, is covering a lot of territory, and, and as he covers it, um, again, he is challenging 
for kingdom upside down. Um, as you walk through your journey of faith, look at what's going on in your life and ask yourself the question, am I living a kingdom upside down kind of life? Am I following after the things of God more than I'm following after the things of this world? In Matthew chapter 7, he moves into judging others. Do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there's a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under feet and then turn and tear you to pieces. Well, I can't speak for you, but I can tell you that the reason that I look at the speck of sawdust in someone else's eye instead of focusing on the plank in my own eye is that it's easier to see fault in others. Um, in order to see the plank in my own eye, I have to look at the faults that I have. Now, mind you, I know that I have many faults, um, but it's easier to look at the faults of others, and it's, it's easier to dwell on the faults of others than it is to think of the faults that we have for ourselves. But we need to be truthful with ourselves and with God and allow him to deal with that plank in our eye before we begin trying to help someone else with their speck. Well, verse 7 of chapter 7 talks about asking and seeking and knocking. Um, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, we'll give him a snake. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. So we need to ask and seek from the Lord. But remember, we've earlier on in this passage back in chapter 5 we've allowed him to look at our heart and to purify our heart so we're coming at this with motives that are pure and as we come with pure motives then we are asking for things that will again glorify him so as we seek him we will knock and he will answer the narrow and wide gates he covers those true and false prophets true and false disciples. And then he closes out in uh, verse 24 through 27 with the wise and foolish builders. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowd were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. Well, he can speak with authority because he is the Son of God. As he spoke with authority, he spoke knowing the truth about a kingdom upside down, knowing that what was to come was the culmination of that upside down kingdom with he himself being crucified on a cross for us. So 
as he spoke of kingdom upside down, then he goes on and he lives out that kingdom upside down. And so as we follow him, we must understand that we walk differently than those in the world. We have a different worldview from the rest of creation because we understand who he is, what he has done, and what he desires for us to do. The problem is that while we may know it, the choice comes down for each of us. Will you put it into practice? Because each of us are going to build on a foundation. Is your foundation going to be the solid rock of Jesus Christ? And when the storms come, it may sway a little bit, but that house is going to stand because the foundation is firm. Or are you building on sand? Are, are you building on pipe dreams? Are you building on the things of this world? And if you are building on the things of this world, the storms are still going to come, but it's not going to stand because it's not built on a firm foundation. Jesus lays out for us in the Sermon on the Mount a very clear foundation on which to build. My prayer is that each of us will build on that firm foundation and that we will be salt and light in a world that desperately needs to know Jesus. In your dealings with one another, be a peacemaker. In your dealings with one another, whether it be in person or on social media, and I think I would say especially on social media, be gentle, be kind, be Jesus. Love one another as he has loved you. And let's see what difference we can make in this world that seems to be going in a different direction. You are loved.